Hi guys, welcome back to my channel once again. In this video, I'm going to show you how to cut and how to sew the style on your screen now. So these are the measurements we need for the for the top or for the style. The shirt length is 34, the sleeve length is 25, the hips is 44, 42, belly 37, chest 40, neck 16.5 and muzzle or biceps is 14. So guys before we jump before we do the cutting I would like to make some explanation or some of the things you need to know especially the wideness of the material or the fabrics that I'm going to be using to do the cutting and the length of it. So the wideness of the material that I'm going to use to do the cutting is determined by the hips measurement of your client. Please take note of this. You use your hip measurement to determine how wide the material that you are going to use to do the cutting will be. So in this case, when your hip is 42, you divide 42 by 2. Then you are going to add 2 inch to the result. For example, my hip is 42. When I divide it by 2, that is 21. Then I am going to add 2 inch for sewing allowance. And that will be 23. So the total wideness of the material that I'm going to be using for this um, cutting will be 23. But take note of this: it should not be less than the wideness should not be less than 23, but it can be greater than 23. So in this case, the wideness of my material that I'm going to be using is 24.5. 24.5. Take note, please. It is very, very important. It should not be less than 23, but it can be greater than 23. Now, what about the length of the shirt or the length of the material that I'm going to be using to do the cutting? So, the length of this shirt or the, to the top is 34. So, you are going to add 4 inch to this. Start. I'm sorry, you are going to be adding 6 inch for cutting and sewing allowance. Don't forget this. We are going to add six inch to this 34 so the total number will become that 40 inch so take note of this also it should not be less than 40 but it can be greater than 40 so in this case the total length okay the total length i'm using is 40 hope you can see the 40 inch here so the, the next thing i'm going to do now you know this is these are two material the front panel and the back panel. Make sure you indicate um, the, uh, the wrong side of the material or the fabrics. So, I'm going to fold over this material and this one is going to serve as my my front panel. This one is going to serve as my front panel. So, the first thing you are going to do is to draw your neckline. Neckline is very, very important. It's, it's just a straight line that will guide you on how to do the cutting just like a guiding line so the second line is the shoulder line don't forget this the, se the second line is the shoulder line so my shoulder line is two inch don't forget two inch two inch and that shoulder line is also our slant it's going to serve as a slant of the top two inch so the next thing I'm going to do now is to do the neck calculation on my on my neckline. And so to, to do the neck calculation, it is very simple. You are going to divide your so the neck of um, this client of mine is 16.5. So I'm going to divide 16.5 by 6 minus 0 .0 0 0.6. So I have 2.1. So in this case. So this 2.1 is for the width of the neck, that is from here, from the folded part to this other side, that is the width of the neck. So in this case, the width of the neck is 2.1, 2.1 inch. Then how can I get the length of the neck, that is from the neckline down to the shoulder line. So how can I get the length of it? To get the length of the neck is very simple. The width, you are going to add 0 0.6 to the width, so in this case, 2.1 plus 0.6 that is 2.7 2.7 will be the length of this neck so 5, 6, 7 
so you can use your ruler to make it very easy for you to do so so here is the next the next thing i'm going to do now is to um give it a nice cup so what i'm going to do now is on my shoulder line i'm going to apply my shoulder measurement or the back measurements on this uh on my shoulder line so my back measurement is 16. back measurement is not here but the back measurement is 16. so the back measure is 16. so i'm going to measure 8 inch so we are going to divide that 16 by 2 that is 8 inch then plus half inch sewing allowance 8 inch plus half inch sewing allowance so that is 8.5 then you are going to connect from this neckline down to this point here which is the shoulder line so after that we are going to talk about how to get or to determine our chest line and to get our chest line is very simple we use, uh, we use our chest measurement to get our chest line here is how it is done divide your chest by four then you are going to subtract three inch from the result so in this case 40 divided by four minus three that is seven simply means so from the shoulder line downward is going to be seven inch and that will be my chest line so i'm going to draw it so the next thing i'm going to do now is to apply the same back measurement on this shoulder measurement on the chest line apply the measurement on the chest line in this case the shoulder is 8.5 with the sewing allowance then connect them together so guys i'm going to take the deepness of the front panel which is one inch the deepness of the front panel is one inch as shown so the next thing i'm going to do now is to apply my main chest measurement so my chest is 40 so you are going to divide your chest by four when i do that i have 10 10 inch so then you are going to add one inch for sewing allowance 10 inch then one inch for sewing allowance so the next thing I'm going to do is to do the arm hole cup. Simple as this. So we are done to this part. We are done with this part already. So the next thing we are going to talk about now is how to get the hips line and the belly line or the tummy line. To do so, it is very simple. It depends on how tall or your customer is. Or you can simply just measure from your from the shoulder down to your hip halfway your hip whatever you get you divide your chest by four then you are going to subtract that uh, your result from the um, from your shoulder to hip measurement for example from the from shoulder to hip measurement of this client of mine is 25 and when i divide chest which is 40 by 4 that is that is 10 so you are going to subtract 10 from that 25 so in this case 10 i'm sorry 25 minus 10 that is 15 so it simply means the hip line or hip line of this client of mine is going to be 15 take note take note of this major from your shoulder to your hip whatever you get divide your chest by four then subtract that that, that result or that well, the division of your chest by four from your chest, your shoulder, down to the hip measurement. Then you will have your hip line. So in this case, um, my hip line is going to be 15 inch. Then half of 15 inch will give us our belly. So in this case, I'm going, I'm going to apply my hip measurement on my hip line. So my hip measurement is 42 that is 42 divided by 4 that is 10.5 then plus one inch sewing allowance now to the belly line or to the belly point so this this top has no inner side pocket it is direct so the belly line belly measurement is 37 so 37 divided by 4 divided by 4 that is 9.25 9.25 or 9.2 so 9.2 plus half inch sewing allowance i'm sorry plus one inch sewing allowance so the next thing i'm going to do now is to connect 
from this line to the belly line up to the chest line so i'm going to do the connection now this is how to do the connection so guys we have our front panel so the next thing i'm going to do now is the cutting So guys, I'm done with the cutting of the front panel. So I'm going to place my back panel on the material, then place um, my front panel on it and um, do the remaining cutting. So I've already placed my back panel on the material on, on, on my table. Then place your front panel on it. So the first thing you are going to do, the first thing you are going to do is to arrange it very well then we are going to trim along um the shoulder line or the slant of the front panel as shown so i'm going to trim it like this trim it down so the next thing we are going to do now is the back rise so we are going to draw the front panel downward like this and make sure that from here to here is four inch Yes, I have 4 inch already. Hopefully you can see that 4 inch. Then, arrange it very well again. We are, go we are going to fold over this back panel, over the front panel. Fold it over it and leave it like an having sewing allowance in between them. Having sewing allowance in between them. Having sewing allowance in between them. This is what I'm talking about. This is how to do the folding over. Fold it over like this. Then there will be an having sewing allowance in between them. Now this is the front panel. So you fold it over like this. That is how to do the folding over. So when I'm done with that, I'm going to fold it over. Then I'm going to trace the back neck from the front panel neck. Trace it from the front panel neck. As shown, then do the com complete it here. So it's as simple as this. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to measure this the length of this this length of the front panel and do the same thing on the back panel. So in this case, I have 6.5. So I'm going to apply the same 6.5 on the back panel. So what I'm going to do now is to um, follow the front panel, follow the back panel, um, trim the back panel on the front panel as shown. So this is what I'm going to do now by leaving some good um, having allowance at the back so that the front panel will be deeper than the back panel. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. The reason why we are doing that is that so that whenever the person wears the shirt, the back will be very free. Or the person will be able to move his, his hand about without any problem. So guys. So the next thing I'm done with the cutting already. The next thing I'm going to do now is to cut my cutting allowance this is a cutting allowance i was telling you about so that is all for the cutting of the front panel and the back panel so the next thing we are going to do now is the slip so guys this is the slip but first thing let me let me tell you how you can get um, the wideness of your slip for you to get the wideness of your slip is very simple. You are going to make it of your chest measurement to get the width of the slip as shown. This is the kind of wideness I'm talking about. So you are going to divide your chest by four, then you will add two inches to your result. For example, 
as the chest of this client of mine is 40. When I divide it by 4, that is 10. I'm going to add 2 inch. Then that will be 12. So, in this case, the total width of um, the material I'm going to be using to do the cutting of the sleeve is going to be 12 inch wide. 12 inch wide. It should not be it should not be less than 12, but it can be greater than 12. Then after you do the joining, you will trim out the excess materials that is going to be at the armpit of the shirt. So it should not be less than 12, but it can be greater than 12. Take note of this, please. Chest over 4 plus 2. That would that will give you the wideness of your sleeve. So now the shortness of this place, this is the lower part of the slip, and this is the upper part of the slip. The shortness of the lower part of the slip is going to be 4.5. So I'm going to mark 4.5. Do the same thing on the upper part. And um, draw your line. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to divide the slip diagonally as shown. Do the division diagonally. Then after that, you are going to divide it by two. Take half of the sleeve, half of it. Here is the half of the sleeve. So we have two box now. First box, second box. You are going to divide each of the box into two. Divide it into two. So. This is the half of this one, then half of this other box. So what you are going to do now, you are going to mark in half inch outward for the first box or upper box. Then the lower box, you are going to mark half inch inward. So I'm going to do the lower box first, that is half inch. Then this box outward, half inch. So do the connection from here. Passing through the intersection down to the lower part. So it's as simple as this. I'm going to do the cutting of the slip now. So I'm done with this one already. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to apply my muzzle measurement on the slip. So in this case, from shoulder, from shoulder bone. So the muzzle of my of my client is 10 inch. 10 inch. So I just mark the 10 inches. The next thing I'm going to do is apply my muzzle measurement. The muzzle of my client here is 7. Then add 1 inch for sewing allowance. So you are going to connect from here down to the lower sleeve with the aid of your ruler, or you can just use your free hand. the connection perfectly so the next thing i'm going to do is take the full length of the sleeve so now take note of this the full length of my client's sleeve is 25 25 then plus one inch sewing allowance that is 26 in total so what i'm going to do i'm going to remove three from this 26 because that three is going to serve as the cuff of the sleeve so the total my total sleeve now is going to be 23 i'm going to mark that 23 23 marked here so then make sure you draw the line draw the line so the next thing I'm going to do now is to take my lower muzzle um, point so my lower muzzle point is 7 from here to here is 7 then you no know, to get my the width of my lower muzzle all you need to do is to subtract one from the main muzzle. So in this case, the, the main muzzle is 14 inch wide. Then for the lower muzzle, it's going to be 13 inch. That is 14 minus 1. You have your lower muzzle. Then 1 inch sewing allowance. So now the next thing I'm going to do now, the rest of my client is 8. Then plus 1 inch for the conflicts for the links that will be nine inch so i'm going to measure nine inch here i'm sorry nine nine divided by two that is 4.5 so from here to here will be 4.5 then the um, the this uh, um the the 
the dart of my slave is going to be three quarter inch so I'm going to mark that three quarter then one inch sewing allowance so i have it already so the next thing i'm going to do is to do the connection all through the lower muzzle is how to do the connection so the next thing i'm going to consider now is the slip placket to get the slip placket is very simple from this point this is our sewing allowance you are going to measure from this point upward 1.5 here 1.5 inch and take the length the 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 slit or the opening for the um slip placket it's going to be i'm going to be using 3.5 you can use 4 inch to 5 inch but in this case i'm going to be using 3.5 for the slip opening so the next thing i'm going to do now is the cutting of the slip so take this guy up and leaving the other two side down then cut this placket opening and don't forget to show the wrong side and the right side this is the wrong side this is the wrong side so guys i'm done with the cutting of the slip so the next thing i'm going to do now is the the yoke of this senator top the cuff the placket itself the pocket and um, the piping so guys this is the main placket i'm going to be using the wideness of this placket is one a quarter one a quarter it should be one a quarter or 1.5 then the length of my placket is 15 inch long 15 inch long so this is the material that i'm going to be using for the placket and this is going to be the background of my piping the background of the piping then this main material is going to be on top of the of the placket this main material so now the length of this material here now the wideness of this background piping is half inch half inch wide so now this is my yoke this is the yoke i'm using the total wideness of this yoke is eight inch before folding eight inch before folding in so this is the cuff that i'm using so the length of this cuff is nine because the wrist of this client is eight so when you add one inch that will serve as the links hole so and the wideness of this is, is three inch three inch wide so that's all guys so the next thing i'm going to do now is to do the gumming of the piping so i'm going to gum it on this material this is going to serve as the background color of this placket this material is going to serve as the background color of this placket and this one is going to serve as the piping background color so I'm going to go it now. So guys, I've already gone the the plate. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to fold in this guy, fold it over again, then fold this one and create my main plate. So I'm going to show you when I'm done. So guys, I've already gone the plate. This is the main plate. So this material is going to be on top of the placket. This is the main the main material. But before that, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to work on this one. The wideness of this material here, when it is being folded, is one a quarter. See, one a quarter. The wideness of it is one a quarter. That quarter of an inch is going to be the sewing allowance. So the well, the total um wideness of this material that. We are going to make it, making use of is going to be one inch as the wideness is going to be one so i'm going to my sewing machine and sew half quarter of an inch as a sewing allowance so guys i've already done the sewing 
So the next thing I'm going to do now is to turn it to the right side. Turn it to the right side. So when I'm done with that, I'll... So guys, I've already turned it out to the right side. And um, what the next thing I'm going to do now is to iron it down with the point of sewing will be at the middle. The sewing line will be at the middle here. And that is that, that this face here is going to be the one that will be facing down. Then the where the, the place that has no sewing line, that is where that is going to face up. So I'm going to iron it down and when I'm done, I'll let you know. So guys. This is um, the, the one I'm going to be using. So the, the, the wideness here, the wideness of this uh, material here is um, one inch wide. It's one inch wide already. And the length ranges between 30 to 35. Guys, the length of it ranges between 30 and 35. So you can use 30 or 35 inch long. So here is how to attach this thing to your blanket. Here is how to attach it to your blanket. Please pay a close attention to this. So this is this is where I folded my blanket. This is the folded part of the blanket. So I'm going to turn it outside as shown. Then. Fold this one in, and the way I'm going to attach to the plague, that one will be outside this time around, as you can see what I'm doing now. So, this this place, we are going to place it on it. I'm going to place it like this. The 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 size of these points and the edge of the plague should be the same. That is, that is where I unfold the, 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 the point, the part I unfolded. Hope you are getting what I'm saying. This is the part I unfolded. So before you, you do this, you unfold this one. Then you are going to place it like this, so that they will be at the same um, size or at the same point. Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. So. And um, the next thing we are going to do after that is this. We are going to make sure that it is at the middle, extreme middle, meaning at the middle of the blanket, at the exact middle of the blanket. Look at where the, the portion of the blanket. This is the portion of the blanket. This is the portion of the blanket. So it's going to be at the middle of the blanket. So the next thing I'm going to do now, please take note. I'm going to measure from here. To this side two inch major from here to here i'm sorry 2.5 inch and not two inch from here not from where i unfolded the where the folding is going to be i'm going to measure from here toward this side 2.5 inch so then that 2.5 inch point i'm going to pin it the 2.5 inch point i'm going to pin it this is my office pin. This is the office pin, office pin I'm going to be using. Hopefully you can see the office pin. Then you are going. The, here is what I'm talking about. Major from here, 2.5 inch. Then use your hand to hold it down. Make sure this material is at the middle, and I'm going to pin it down with my um, office pin. This is exactly what I'm talking about. I've already done that. 2.5 inch place, 2.5 inch. So the next thing I'm going to do is to measure from here towards this side, 2 inch. Then I'll now grab it at that very point. So let me let me show you what I'm talking about. Measure from the point you pin towards this side, 2 inch. Then hold it down and grab it. When you do, you grab it. So you bring this one foot over it, and it should be very close to where you pin again. This is exactly where we pin. So we are make, make sure that they are equal. So I'm going to pin this guy down again. This guy, I'm going to pin it down again. So let me show you what I'm talking about again. So measure from the point I you pin two inch. Then those you can simply use your marking chalk. You mark it. 
mark that point which you pin then you are going to hold it like this then draw it to this side to where you pin then you are going to use that to pin it down then you take another office pin and pin it down also the, that exact point it should be very close this is what i'm talking about this is what i pinned previously so the next pin is going to be very very close to that point so i'm pinning i'm doing the pinning now so i've already done that so guys the next thing i'm going to do so this guy here this one is two inch long two inch so hopefully you can see what i'm talking about so what i'm going to do to this guy now is this i'm going to spread it all over it so this here is it hopefully you can see what i'm doing so this guy is going to be at the middle where i'm going to be at the middle then i'm going to fold it like this then fold this other part over again then we are going to have the exact thing that we are, that we are talking about or we will, we will be having a bolter like shape here bolter like shape here so guys the next thing i'm going to do now from the point i pin i'm going to measure from that side toward this side three inch this time around is three inch make major measure three inch then at the point of three inch i'm going to pin it down use my pin to hold it down Pin it down. Now I've already done that. So the next thing I'm going to do now, from the point I pin, I'm going to take two inch from that point. Then use your marking chalk to indicate that two inch. Then grab it like this, like 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 what we did here. So you are going to do the same thing here grab it draw it back make sure it's at the middle then where i i pin previously here i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to pin it again with the difference as in the distance should be very very small tiny but there should you should not pin them on don't pin this one on this one but there should be a little bit of a difference or distance in between them the distance should be very very small so now I'm done with this one. I'm going to the third one. So this is how it's going to look. This one here. Then this one is going to be here. So now the third one. So you to do the third one. You are going to measure three inch from this point you pin also. Measure three inch. Hold it down. Then you are going to pin it again. Make sure it's at the middle of the blanket. Then pin it down. I'm going to do the pin. So I've already pinned it. Now from this point, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to measure two inch from here, and then I'll mark that point with my marking chalk. Two inch. Then mark it with your marking chalk. Then grab it by your hand, draw it towards this side. Then I'm going to pin it down again. I'm going to pin it down. Pin it down very close to where you pin previously. This is what I'm talking about. Pin it down with your office pin. So here is it. So now from here on you can do another one or you can just leave this one. But let me add another one. Then measure three inch again. Then pin it down. Pin it down. I've already pinned it. So measure two inch downward. Measure two inch and do the grabbing and grab it two inch. Then grab it. Then draw it backward and pin it very very close to where you've been previously. Make sure it's at the middle of the blanket, please. Make sure it's at the middle of the Look it. So I'm doing the pinning now. This is the last pin. 
this is laughing so the next thing i'm going to do now is very simple we've come to the end of the play cut so the next thing i'm going to do now is to cut this play cut cut it here or here then i'm going to create a, a, a good shape or i can just leave it like this by leaving the shape like this something like this so i can leave it like this or you can use any shape you wish but make sure it is at the middle make sure it is at the middle make sure it is at the middle so this is what i'm, I'm talking about so guys so the next thing i'm going to do now is very simple so the next thing we are going to do guys is the sewing aspect of it when you are doing the sewing you will be doing the sewing at the same time be removing the pins small small so i will make sure that this very guy is at the middle of the placket here is how we are going to do the sewing you are going to start the sewing from here sew it sew it from this point down to this point to, to where you pin do the same on the other side then you are going to jump this pin take this guy backward in between this guy and this guy you are going to sew it on the placket you do the same thing on the other side then you jump this pin here take this guy to this guy then in between this guy and this very guy here you are going to do the same and on and on and until you get to the end of the placket then after that, after that, the next thing you are going to be doing is to tag this guy down, tag this guy down, and maybe let me do the sewing first, then after that I'll show you what to do next. So guys, I've already done the stitches. Here's the stitches I was talking about that time. So I've already done it, you can see how I did it. I haven't, I have not removed the pin yet. So now the next thing I'm going to do now, without removing a pin, I'm going to iron them down, iron it down like this. So with the where you mark, where your marking chalk is going to be at the middle, at the exact middle, or at this very point here, that point downward. So your marking chalk is the middle point. I'm going to iron it down, iron all of them down. So when I'm done with that, I will show you the results. So guys, I've already ironed them down. So take note of this place. The next thing I'm going to do now is what they call tagging. I'm going to tag this point here, tag here, tag here, tag it down, tag it down with your sewing machine or stitch it. I'm going to stitch it with your sewing machine, stitch it a bit, a little bit. I'll show you what I'm talking about when I'm done. So guys, I've already done the tagging that I was talking about. Here is how I tag it down. Tag it down. Let me go a little bit very close. You can see the tagging I did here also. I tag them down. So this time around, I'm going to remove my pin because I have not removed the pin yet. So this is the right time for me to remove those pins. So after I remove the after you remove the pin, so the next thing you are going to do is to fold this guy over this guy. Then fold it like this. Then you now it will now look exactly like what we um exactly like what we are talking about. Or it will now look like a bow tie, a bow tie, and that is what we are looking for. So when I'm done with that, I will show you guys the result. You tag the middle. You are going to tag the middle of this guy here, as shown. So guys, I've already done the tagging. Here is how I tag it. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to iron it down, bring this guy to this side, this guy to this side, and iron it. I'm going to show you the result when I'm done with that. So guys, this is the final look of the play cut. The final look of it after I iron it down. This is the final look of it. Here is how it looks. So guys. That is all for this papi. So the next thing I'm going to do now is the I'm sorry, that is all for this play cats.
This is the final look of the of the play kit, rather no piping please. This is the final look of the play kit after I iron it down. So the next thing I'm going to do now is the piping as in the background color of the piping and the, the attachment of the um the play kit and the pocket also. So guys, this is my main piping and this is the background color of the piping. So I'm going to insert it like this. Then I'll go to my sewing machine, insert it like this, and I'll go to my sewing machine and sew it. So when I'm done, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So guys, I've already done the sewing. You can see how tiny the background of the piping is. This is the inside the piping, and this is the outside. You can see how I stitch it. The background is um very tiny, and that is how it's supposed to be. So guys, we have our plicate. We have our plicate already. We have our piping. Then the next thing I'm going to do now is to join the shoulder of the the top and um, pipe it. Fix the plate, then I will show you how it looks on it. Please stay tuned. So, guys, I've already done, joined the shoulder. So, the next thing I'm going to do now is to trim the neck. Then I'm going to run the piping. So, this is the yoke. I've already fixed the yoke. So, this shirt, this top is not going to have an inner inner facing. There's not going to be an inner facing. So this is how the shoulder look like. So guys, when I do the pipe, when I'm done with the piping, the fixing of the placket, then I'm going to show you guys. So guys, I've already, I've already trimmed the neck. So next thing I'm going to do now is the piping. So guys, I've already done the piping. This is the final look of the piping. I run about five stitches on my piping this is how it looks so guys the next thing is the attachment of the placards let me show you how it's going to look like on it let me show you the picture i think the picture of it but let me do it before i show you so guys i've already saw the placard attached the placard to it to the main top so this is how it looks you can see how nice um you can see the, 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 how it looks on it so so what is left now is the pocket let me take it a little bit close take it closer 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 look at it so guys so the next thing I'm going to do now is the attachment of the pocket and um, how the pocket is done also. So guys, this is the pocket I'm going to be using. So this pocket is 5 inch long and 4.5 inch wide. So. 5 inch long, let me show you what I'm talking about. 5 inch long, and see how long it is. It is 5 inch, then the width, the width is 4.5, 4.5 inch wide. So I'm going to gum this uh, gum now. So, guys, I've already gone the gum already, done the gumming of the pocket. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cut it out, then fold it over. And I'll show you the result when I'm done. So guys, this is the background color. This is the material I'm going to be using to do the background color of the pocket. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to pull hemming gum under this pocket round. I'm going to pull hemming gum round it. Then I'm I'm going to gum it down. So, so I'm going to pull hemming gum like this. As shown, I'm going to pull hemming on, then you will gum it down. Then after that, I'll show you the next thing. So guys, I've already put the hemming on. So let me show you what I'm going to do next. 
So I'm going to do fold it in like this. Fold it in. So allowing this guy to come out. Just allowing the background color to come out very tiny as shown. So then I'm going to iron it down. I'm going to iron it down and I'll do the same thing around the pocket. I'll show you the result. So guys, I'm done folding in or bending in the background uh, material already. So the next thing I'm going to do now, I'm going to sew from this upper part down to this point. Then I'll do the same thing on the other side. Then after I'm done with that, this is where my collar gun stopped. So I'm going to fold it like this. Then after that, I'll fold it in. And this is what we are going to have at the end. Something like this. This is what we are going to have at the end. So this is what we are going to have after that. I'll show you the result when I'm done. So guys, I'm done with the stitching already. I'm done with the stitches. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cut out this excess material here. I'll show you when I'm done with that. So guys, I've already cut the excess material out. So the next thing I'm going to do now, I'm going to fold it inside. Then I'm going to iron it down. But before I I'm going to put my hemi gum here. So to gum it down. Let me put the hemi gum now. So, put your hemi gum. Put it inside. And gum it down. With your, um, your iron. I'm going to gum it down. So I'll show you the result when I'm done. So guys, I'm done with the, play, uh, the pocket. The next thing I'm going to do is the attachment. So guys, I've already attached the pocket and the play kit. So guys, this is the final look of the, of the play kit, the background piping, the piping itself. So guys, thank you for watching. If you are yet to be a subscriber, please do subscribe now. If you like the video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on your, not your, not your notification bell so that whenever I upload a video, you will be the first person to get notified. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in my next video. So the next thing I'm going to do, what is left now is the attachment of the sleeve and the finishing. So guys, hopefully, you see how this placket is done. This is both type placket, both type placket with a different background color so thank you for staying with me